Chancellor Humphreys in the building. Make What's some noise. Up? Thanks for having me. Uh, get to smoke. I, 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 we're going to say officially, I, I'm, I'm the first guest to roll one up and uh, smoke. I am oh. pretty sure that is the case. So. Uh, if, if not, if you are watching this and if you have smoked <laughs> on my podcast, please remind me because I just don't fucking remember. I'm comments. I'm like, it was me, bro. <laughs> like, what is he talking about? <laughs> so for anyone out there that is not familiar, uh, Chancellor runs a Instagram page, Keep yes. Pittsburgh Dope. Or keep PGH dope. I don't know how you prefer to handle that situation. Well, the reason, so yeah, keep, <laughs> keep Pittsburgh dope. But yeah. like, so I couldn't, um, Instagram won't let me post. It's so weird. Instagram won't let me post keeppittsburghdope.com as my link. Yeah, I guess it, it thinks I'm selling drugs in Pittsburgh. I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> So I, I had to have a buy another oh, domain. Oh, yeah. but what what if you need an Instagram? You know what I'm saying? Hey, They're the ones selling drugs. Oh, yo. <laughs> that was good. Fuck. That was good. Uh, oh shit. Yeah, I might need that Insta. Yeah, yo, holy fuck. That was great. Um <laughs> but no, so I had to buy the uh I had to buy another domain. I had to buy the keeppgh.com domain so I could post. They let me post that on Instagrams. So, but uh but whatever you prefer. But hell of a bar right there that, that, <laughs> if i start rapping i'm gonna use that yeah. you got it you got it so your instagram page for those that don't know just to quickly get through this nonsense photography mm -hmm. street life street wear yep. urban mm -hmm. that's it and yeah. it's very very simple but right. as a wise gentleman by the name of hj hines once said mm -hmm. To do a common thing uncommonly well brings success. Facts. I read that on the back of a ketchup bottle when I was 12 <laughs> and it changed my life. Hey, that's what, it, you know, you never know where it's going to come from. <laughs> those gems. Yeah. But uh, no, no, thank you, man. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i getting more comfortable uh, as I do it more. It's just like, just really embracing, embracing it like, hey, like I'm, I'm good at this. This is what I do. Um, it makes people happy uh, to, to look at my photos. So like, as of late, as, as I've getting older and I feel like maturity, it's just like embracing that. Cause like, you know, I might've been embarrassed or kind of like, yo, like, you know, humble, but like still being humble, but like, yo, this, this is what I do. And just being comfortable that it is a, uh, almost like a service to like, Hey, people like your stuff. You have to put it out cause it makes people feel good. So, but, uh, yeah, your everyday person on the street, taking photos of them and, uh, whatever hits my spirit, I, 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 uh. I click my, my camera. The thing that I really like about your page is that I feel that like it highlights a side of the city that a lot of haters like to pretend doesn't exist. Mm. Expound. Wait, wait, expound. You know, like, oh, I think that people from outside of Pittsburgh or even people here mm -hmm. think that maybe we're not necessarily the most like fashion forward or culture forward city and in some ways mm -hmm. they're not wrong but That's that stuff yeah. is here and i like that your page highlights it yep. and it is very it's not even like an overly like positive or in your face kind of way it's just a very like natural transparent view yep. of the city like i don't even feel like you go out of your way to like make the page cool right. it just is cool because the city is cool if you mm -hmm. know where to look yeah, it, it 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 really is, and like, and I feel like that that's the way it started. Like that's the you know because like at the, when I, and, and I think back to 2014 is when I started the page, and at that time I was really into like I I really did like read GQ and like <laughs> check out what's going on. And like, granted, I still have my own, but I I would like to like you know pea coats and like you know how to get them tailored if you're going to church and stuff like stuff like that. Like I was I was really into that at the time. And that's what even inspired the page, just like me going to New York Fashion Week and seeing the street photographers, you know, do their thing. But so at that time, that's what I was really focused on, like, you know, fashionable people in Pittsburgh, because GQ even ran a uh, an article, like we were like top five worst dressed cities in America. Really? Or, I, mean, I think we might have been number one. Wow. Um, but yeah, that was an article. Damn, shade. Yeah, hella shade <laughs> on a national level. Like, <laughs> they might be good at football and hockey, but uh, they can't dress for shit. But um. <laughs> But yeah, that was a big thing to me. But then it was it started out at the beginning as looking for cooler fashion and style. But I think it's transformed into like just unique looking people. And sometimes I can't even it's sometimes it's not even about their style. It's just like just their presence or their or hairstyle or whatever. But uh it's just transformed into 
whatever hits my spirit outside of style. But yeah. don't, don't get it twisted. Style is still Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think that the interesting thing about a lot of the work that you capture is that it is very similar in a way to other people that, you know, kind of do this candid street photography sort of thing that highlights fashion and culture. But a lot of times other photographers lean really hard into, I don't want to say the absurd because your style is your style, right? right? But I think that a lot of the stuff that you capture is very like real and not like otherworldly. If that, does that, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you see like a, somebody posted this uh, photo of someone like, oh, I randomly caught this person walking down the street in mm -hmm. San Diego. And it's like, there's no way that person was wearing that just right. walking down the street. It seems a little absurd to me, yeah. but maybe I could be wrong. Yeah. But I feel like everything that you capture is just very like real. Yeah. Even if there is some like really unique and fashion forward things, these are things that aren't like completely uh, inaccessible by anyone who is looking for your page. Right to uh or looking to your page as a way to potentially influence themselves in their style and mm -hmm. choices that they want to make or just knowing what's going on yeah i mean no, but does that make sense no it, it does but it goes back like i feel like it goes back to us like you know being connected as humans because just like you said like you know it, like that could be a person like that, that could have been walking down the street but I feel like your instinct, like it's like that's not that's not organic. You yeah, know what I'm saying? And yeah. Like, I, I feel like you, we as humans, we can really feel that. Like you know, some may not have the discernment to feel it, but I feel like if you feel that, it, it was potentially that's the case. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what I mean. From you know, when it comes to to my page and what I do, I feel like you know, some people might have. I thought that was stage, but I feel like the majority it, they know it's 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 a uh, it's an organic shot. It's a real moment you know capturing a real moment and that's where i feel the connection comes in between you know someone viewing it like this was a real moment you know and you you feel that internally it's like you can't really articulate it but you, you feel it like this is a real moment question yeah now i imagine throughout the course of your career you've been hired to like do photo shoots for people mm -hmm. yeah for sure do you find it difficult to do a staged shoot because of like your the way that you normally approach photography, yeah. So that, that's funny. That's a great question. Uh, it, it's not that I um. So here I, I I get I've been doing I've been doing photography for about for eight years, almost about nine, and um yeah, let's say eight. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to the the scheduled shoots, like people are hiring me for shoots, like. I am so nervous. Like leading, like yo, know, every like if I have a shoot at eleven a.m. on a Saturday, it's like a, a family of three, you know, and I have to like <laughs> shoot them. That's where I am. I know I I know I do it well. I know I can do it. I know I, I've done it so many times. But like when it comes to those shoots, I am such. I have so much more anxiety. Even no matter it, it still hasn't gone away. <laughs> no matter how much, but until I speak to that, I think it's the elements of like, you know introducing myself like i've never met these people in my life like hoping they like me hoping they like the photo shoot like you know making yeah. them feel comfortable and everything all of that plays into the the anxiety leading up to it so i i that's what i don't like about it but i always enjoy you know people's happiness with the the final product but uh I, i'm still uncomfortable doing those shoots and i don't sure. know i don't know when that's gonna go away sure yeah. i think that there there's an element of uh a lack of control, I imagine, when you're on the street. Because, like, not only do you not have control over who's going to be outside, you don't have control over the weather, right. where the sun is, how shadows are being cast from different buildings. And yep. I imagine, like, I wouldn't be surprised if easily, you know, I'll be generous. I'll say 75% of your output is happy accidents yeah. when you're outside. Yeah. Yo, I, and I, yeah, I would, outside of, like, you know, the, the, the influencer posts and, like, stuff like that it's it's really uh it's really by chance and usually like and it's and it, it, i remember I, it's so awesome now because i don't get too many no's anymore it would be like a thing where i would get nah, nah, nah. but now it's just like it's been a lot easier but um but again yeah i, I guess because uh when i do schedule shoots whether it be for like a clothing brand or like a a family or even an event like they're they're counting on me, like you know. It's like they're counting. Yeah. They, they they know I can do the job, but like they're they're still counting on me, and I feel like I like that pressure, but it's still it's an it's an anxiety that comes with it. But um, 
But like you said, the streets, it's just, I'm just flowing. It's just yeah. me, like, you know, out there just doing what I want. And uh, that, that's where I found the most joy. And, and it's, it's already therapeutic for me at this point, you know. Word. Yeah, it's, I have to do it. Um, and when I don't do it, you can feel it. Even if I don't capture anything, it's just like that, that process of like walking around, searching. And uh, it's like, it's become like therapeutic. Now, in terms of, you know, the, the, the chancellor of 2013, 2014, GQ magazine, getting, <laughs> getting, yeah. getting, you know, coats sized up and yeah, all that. Tailored. Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, like what almost a decade's worth of experience mm-hmm. shooting people, observing fashion, observing the changes, how that's changed your personal relationship with style and culture. Yeah. How do you feel about these things do you still find yourself like invested personally mm-hmm. or do you find yourself living life more like behind the lens if it was and like you're like more concerned you're interested in what other people are doing but right. for you you're just kind of like i don't know i'm doing what i'm doing and that's it yeah like that, that's, even with that I'm, I'm like i'm literally I'm, I'm doing what i excuse me what i like um like and, and i've always been that way like I, as i've gotten as i'm getting older i'm more into uh shoes like what shoes i wear like okay. making because like before i was like yo i'm wearing these i'm wearing these until they run into the ground but now that i'm getting a little older like like shoes are becoming a more uh important part to me because it's like if the shoes are right like everything else kind of falls into place for me i'm yeah. very confident that you can tell what a person is like yeah. immediately without saying a word to them by the shoes that they're wearing yeah I, 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 I'm very confident in this. Yeah, I, I've I've heard I, I've specifically heard that from girls, and I always I mean, and I always kind of took it with a grain of salt. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But like a couple girls, I knew it was just like you know they immediately look at a guy's shoe. <laughs> I guess when it comes to dating, but it, like they 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 look at a guy's shoes first. I'm like, whatever. Like y'all don't care. About it. But I I think it's true not only in dating but just in overall. Like you can you can really tell a person about um how they take care of their shoes. Not even take care of their shoes, but just... Yeah, it's just like the kind of shoes that the they're wearing. The kind of shoes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, I can understand from uh, a dating perspective in the realm of somebody that's looking for somebody that takes care of themselves right. and their things. Like, right. that's fine, you yeah. know. Whatever makes you happy uh, on this in this limited amount of time that we have on this rock that's spinning in the <laughs> galaxy if you want to be worried about dirty shoes. As long shoes, as those shoes is clean. Word, yeah. you know. But <laughs> even outside of that, it's just like... There is like a type of person that wears beat up vans. Right. There's a type of person that wears, you know, boots all the time, whether it's 100 degrees out or 10 yeah. degrees out. There's a type of person that just wears, you know, whatever they got at the department store. Exactly. And that, I think that really just says a lot about a person. And, it, and it, yeah. Because like every like subculture has like, whether it's spoken or unspoken, there is a thing about shoes. Yeah. Like, even if you look at, like, old 80s hair metal, like, Metallica Anthrax posters, they're all fucking wearing white high-top Reeboks. Yep. I didn't know that, but was that, like... That was a thing. That was, like, the thrash metal thing. They all were wearing white high-top Reeboks. Yeah, that's hard. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, real hard. I bet you didn't get a, they didn't get a check either. <laughs> Should have got a check for but, that. But, and yeah. then, you know, then you got, like, you know, a lot of, like, yeah. you know, like, the... The punk rock, pop punk stuff. You have like the Converse and the Vans, like I had already right. mentioned, and Adidas. there's just like so much of that stuff. And hip hop, there's a whole other yeah. realm in that. Yep. And then basketball shoes, sports shoes. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that don't play sports that wear sports shoes because they like sports. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's. I feel like it's uh, now that I have it's the most important part of the, the out, your outfit. Um, I'm, we were damn, we're going in on shoes, but that's okay. It's uh, As someone that owns three pairs of shoes. Right, yo, I'm, yo, <laughs> I, I, le, legit the same way. And like, yeah, as I like, you know, just going out more, and it's just like I need to. I'm, I'm gonna switch it up. But my thing is, I, I'm still, che- I still like to buy cheap shoes. Though let's not get it wrong. I just like buying cheap new shoes. It's yeah. like as long as I can switch it up. I remember I don't wear Vans anymore. I used to wear Vans a lot, uh-huh. and I would buy pretty much any pattern color variant that i would find on clearance at urban outfitters because yeah. they would have them for like 20 bucks sometimes with those Bro, sales yes and i had so many fucking vans man i'm gonna give you a gym well I, I, I wear like a size i wear a size 12 and a half but like my go-to is um the burlington clearance rack all the oh, way yeah. in the back yo 
Like you, I, I found, man, I found so many like gems back there. Like on the basketball side, like, I found some Kyrie Irvins that I use to this day. I found some like some uh what's the Adidas phone pod? Some 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 dope Adidas. Like you find some gems back there, like what what is this doing here? And it's like 40 bucks. Yeah. But uh but yeah, yes, you, you, me and you both are in the same boat. Just like that clearance rack, and just as long as it's clean, and I can make an outfit work with it. Sure. And I usually wear all black anyway, so it's sure. Just like, I I can't tell you how many times now in my you know three plus decades I've been on this planet that yeah. I've spent way more money than I should on something that I'm just like, why the fuck did I do that? Yes, it's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Uh, I did it I mean, this weekend. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. Oh, but no, I, 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 yeah, I, it's just like you know that feeling when you're like you're already you're already at the register, and it's like people behind you, and it's like I didn't I didn't know it was going to be that much, and it's like you can't like you can't back out. It's oh just yeah, like, that happened with me. I was like <laughs> I was feeling uh I was feeling like some type of way, and I went to I was like I'm going to get a new bottle of cologne. Okay, yeah, okay, you know uh -huh. so. And I remembered there was like this cologne that I liked a while ago that I never bought because I was like, I don't feel like spending 80 bucks on a bottle of cologne, right? Yeah, yeah same. So I go and I ask the lady like, yo, do you got this? And she's like, yeah. And like, they actually just released a couple other scents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she like showed me the other ones. I'm like, oh, I really like this one. Yeah. And like, she's just like, all right, so you want to get that one? They don't have prices anywhere. Right. I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. You know? She's like, do you want the, you know, the small bottle? I was like, give me the big one. I don't give a shit, right? Golly, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so then, like, you know, she rings my card out and uh -huh. stuff like that. We're cool. And then, like, I was like, how much was that? It was a fucking $270 bottle Ooh. of cola. <laughs> oh, so you just, you, you. Oh, but I mean, yeah. it's like, whatever, man. Yeah, fuck it. What I'm am small, I going to do? I'm going to smell good for a while. Yeah, so it was worth that's, good. it's fine. It's yeah. fine, you know, but I guess, uh. I, I, you feel like I feel like a little dumb about it, but also it's so funny being like the ding dong in like some heavy metal t shirt, a pair of Levi's that I've owned for fucking ever, some yeah. beat up Adidas and two hundred and seventy dollar cologne. Hey, it's it, it's kind of hard. I mean, it's, 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 it's a scene, and it's like you, know, you just and, that, and that's how you justify. It. It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yo, you know, they didn't see they didn't see this coming. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like yeah, it's worth it. I balled out today. Yeah, I feel like. You know, going back to how you personally like relate to like fashion and all these other things, do you feel like you kind of just like get to live vicariously through people by like sharing their stories, like through your platform? Yeah. So in a way, it's like I don't want to say that like you don't have to like try as hard because obviously mm. you're wearing clothes and you take yeah. care of yourself. You seem <laughs> yeah. healthy. Yeah. It's just like uh, you know, maybe like. Do you go out of your way now? Like, if there's like a shoe release, would you like stand in line to get some shoes? Oh no, no, I'm not that. Okay, I, and I'll never be that deep. Like, yeah. I, I, uh, I enjoy it. That I'm, you know, uh, I don't want to mention because they're not getting paid. But full size run, it's a show I watch, and yeah. it's all about sneaker culture. And like, I, 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 don't, I fell in love. I like it because of the host, but like, it really does keep you informed. Of like, I can't, but like, what's going on in the sneaker culture? I'm like, people. You know, pay this much for what shoe? Da, 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 and all these releases, but uh, no, I'll, I'll never be that much of a um, uh, of a hype beast, as the kids would say. But yeah, I'll never be that. But um, yeah. but I do, I do enjoy it from a like from afar. It's like if I if I see a cool looking shoe, it's like I won't pay that. I won't pay for it. But if I got it free somehow, I'm rocking the hell out of it. Or if my if my money gets up. Yeah, I but. think that as I have gotten older personally, because while I am also not a hype beast, yeah. I've yeah. had these similar experience with like record collecting mm -hmm. and like okay. getting up early to go to like record store days to get limited edition releases of things, totally. you know, like, and I've been in that realm, but as I've gotten older, I just think that like, I value my time more and more and more. Yeah. And it's like, no matter how much I want something, mm -hmm. I got to factor in like how much of, my time and my well-being am I sacrificing to go get up at five o'clock in the morning to stand outside to get like a piece of plastic that has music on it? Yeah, man. That if I really want this thing that bad, right. I can either just be patient and maybe I'll find it down the line. Maybe I won't. Yeah. All it's just a thing. But but I, at the same time, like I guess you can speak to since with with the record collecting because I, I had a I went to a, I had issue like a shoe release. This uh this weekend, 
And it was it was that. It was like a lot. It was literally that. It was people waiting in line like around the block. But it, like it's a community in that, right? Like you see the same, sure. you see the same people, like, yo, like they might be farther back yeah, in the yeah, line, yeah. you know, like and it was cool to see that. Like, you know, this is really a, a community, a culture, and like that I have I have no idea about. So like I'm guessing this is the same thing on the um on the record side. Yeah, that but, is there for but sure. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, do I want to get up at 5 a.m. anymore to 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 be first or 10th or, you know, whatever. But yeah, I guess you, as you're, yeah, I don't know. But it's, I guess that's the fun in it too. It's just making that decision to yeah. get up against your will. <laughs> I think that like, I mean, I guess I can't speak for everybody, but my personal priorities have shifted mm-hmm. and like, I still right. love all of these things, but I need to like love them in a way that works for me mm-hmm. like i can't let them control me Dicta- if right. it's like you know like oh yo i can't do this thing because i gotta get up to buy a record 100%. or i gotta go into work late because i gotta get up to buy a record or i got you know like there's, yeah. like, there's, like there's too many things like every every decision that you make affects something else in your life in totally. like a positive or negative way mm-hmm. and i think there's oh i think i worry about i think maybe i saw it affecting other parts of my life negatively no. when like it gets to a point where like it does become like i don't want to get dark but no, like for... addicting in yeah. a way right yeah, i mean i does. got fucking piles of records sitting upstairs that i've never even listened to yeah like it... hundreds of dollars worth of shit that's like i'm glad i have it right but i th- what's the point of buying a fucking record right to put it on and listen to it exactly you yeah. know and i guess the same thing can happen if like you have a ton of shoes that you're not wearing, but like you could show people that you have these shoes. Right. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You live in a shopping mall. That's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, shopping mall to your but, crib, al- yeah. but also like I have a room fucking house full of toys and records and fucking video games. So wait, it's, wait, I'm no this, different. This place is amazing. It's no different, yeah. right? It's, but I mean like, um, damn, I lost my train of thought, but it's, uh, that's self-awareness. Is is key though. I mean, like just when you come to that point of self awareness, it's like, all right, let me. And, and, and life and life forces it too. Like you said, it's just like yeah. you know your priorities change, and like you might new jobs, whatever, et cetera. But I mean, yeah, but, I mean, also with that being said, I mean, like if you can, if you have a healthy relationship with yourself mm-hmm. and the people around you, and you want to get up at five a.m. to get some shoes, do it. You're, you know, right, rock and roll. And, and that's the thing, and and that's where my thing with social media is that this like it's a uh, like. Man, I have such a love hate re- relationship with social media. It's like, yo, it, it's it's my at this point, it's my livelihood. Like, yo, I ha- I have to be on here. Like, I I have to be on it. Period. I'm sure you're in the same boat. Like, yeah, you know. But uh, but I, I've definitely set up some boundaries as far as like, yo, I can't be on this thing after like nine or eight p.m. Or I can't as soon as I get up. I can't. Um, I can't look at this thing. I have to set boundaries up for it. And that's just happening as I've gotten older and just recognizing what this thing, what it does to you. If you're not on after nine, how are you going to cop an Instagram? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Sorry. He's on it back, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Anyways, I feel you though. No, it's, it's, uh, oh no, we, 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 uh, we dispensary baby. Now we catch up. Um, (laughs) But no, it's, yeah, it's just, you know, just just getting old. It's actually, it's really just fun to take inventory on on yourself sometimes. Like, even just noticing that you came to that point where it's like, hey, <laughs> I can't stand in line at 5 a.m. Hey, I can't buy that Instagram on on my DMs anymore. I got to do it the legal way, you know? <laughs> like, sure, sure, sure. All that, it's just, you know, coming to, coming to realizations. But um, I think but, that there is something that sometimes it blows my mind that people forget that like you don't need to keep your phone on you all the time. No, man. I know that a lot of these, I used to say you could log out whenever you want, but most of these social media apps make it impossible to log out. Right, like you fucking log out of Instagram. It's still going to be like, Hey, yeah. you haven't checked your Instagram in seven days. Yep. Do you want to see what your friends are up to? Just give a little nudge. Like, yeah. Fucking gross. Right. It, it's, it's addictive, man. It, 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 it truly, it truly is yo. And I'm like, <laughs> I think the best, I mean, honestly, yeah. I think the best solution for it yeah. is just making sure that you have things to do in the real world. Right. Just keeping yourself busy, keep yourself around people or whatever it is, because there's a lot of times if I have a day where I'm at work or I'm playing a show or I'm going to a gig, I can go easily for like eight, nine hours without yeah. fucking 
looking at anything. And I'm like, oh shit, I haven't checked it. You know, it feels good. But if you have nothing going on, like Mm -hmm. if you're just not wanting to go out or not wanting to engage with anybody or anything, Mm -hmm. and like, you're just going to sit inside, then it's going to really pull you in. It's really easy. Yeah. Like I find myself watching full shows and I just like, I'll check my phone and I'll be, it'll 20 minutes ago, but I'll miss what was happening. I'm like, what just happened in this movie? And I got to rewind it. But, um, yeah, it's um, it, it's just uh, it's just recognizing. But some people don't have that problem. But for me, it's like I've I've literally I've second guessed myself from social. I've like um, doubted myself on things I shouldn't have. Yeah, and just I think like, that it's <laughs> it's the counterproductive nature of like the creative brain, right? Mm-hmm. Because like you're always analyzing and thinking about the world because right. like you are an artist, right? Yeah, and uh. But because of that, you're able to like visualize all of the worst things that could possibly happen to. For sure. And you like overanalyze yep. that to a point that uh, it can like drive you a little, a little cuckoo bananas. Yeah. And, and people are just crazy. I just feel like it's just like, it's very like, it's oh, just, oh, yeah. Well, it, I mean, also negative. too, like yeah. environment is everything, right? Yeah. Like the people that you surround yourself with in your personal life are going to have a huge effect on you oh, as yeah. a person. Right, for sure. And the people that you surround yourself with in your social media environment are going to have the same effect. Yep, that's a fact. And it's way easier to be socializing with toxic people yeah. online because like you don't know who the fuck these people are and like mm-hmm. they follow you or you follow them or like you know somebody that you've been friends with for fucking five years yeah. is all of a sudden changed their you know political outlook on life and now you got to deal with that it's yeah, it, chaos it, it, it's really humanized celebrities because like i know like a celebrity is bothered or like when they like when they respond yeah. to yeah. like i don't want to know i don't want to know this much about yay i never wanted to hey man that, he, i never that, wanted to that's some mental like <laughs> i know it, 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 it sucks and can i tell you something about that like i hope people don't keep be uh, i I see people I follow, but like, I literally see Kanye have a like, and to me, it, it's and I think it's obvious. It's, it's a mental breakdown. And granted, it's, he's going through a lot, divorced, you know, wife in a new relationship, whatever. We're we're witnessing a mental breakdown through social media, and like, I see people like cheering it on and like liking it, and I'm like, I, these people are stable. Like, yeah. how are they supporting this? Yeah, I can't imagine being in a position. Where like literally like somebody like Kanye West has the world, literally, Biggest but he still world. feels like he genuinely has nothing because yeah. everything. I can't. I, yeah. I, fucking, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I just, I just think. But the way it's obviously he has. It's, it's, it's. Um, I'm not a therapist, but he, he, sure. he just he's he's been going through stuff for a long time, and it's just like. We're, we we it's slowed down for right now. I think I haven't heard. I think he's off of Instagram. I haven't heard anything yeah, there, in a long time. There's but. there there's no way nobody with a normal brain creates the kind of art that that man created. No nah, man, and it's, that can be a very good thing, yeah. and it could also be a very bad thing if it's not. Yeah, I mean, if it's not taken care of, he's always been and when this, like when yeah. ego gets in the way. Of all of that stuff. Did you watch that doc? The doc I Mary? haven't. Yeah. It, 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 that's a really insight into, I honestly, I, 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 it was always just like, yo, his mom died, his mom died. But when you watch it, if you watch this documentary, you get a chance to see, you know, what he went through. Like literally people, Kanye was literally people like laughing in his face, like dogging him, da, 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 Sure. Da. And then he always had his mom, always had his mom. They were so tight. I didn't even know they were that, that close. I mean, I, of course you heard in the music, but- and then once she passed so suddenly off of like, you know, lipo or something like, no, not even, you know, but uh, yeah, you can kind of see that shift and kind of that breakdown in real yeah. time. The thing that like, I guess like going back to the point that brought this up and just like yeah. how, <laughs> uh, you know, celebrities and social media and how yeah. we're so tied in, it like, it bothers me like with Kanye West because it's like, I just want to know about the music yeah. and the art. And right. like I don't need to know, I don't I don't want to know about all of this other stuff that this person's going through. Yeah. Not because I don't think it's valid, not because I don't think they need help. It's just right. like don't, I don't need to see this, and I don't think that the world should be seeing this. No, they don't know. And you. Yeah. I mean, and that goes with even other artists that aren't necessarily in like a mental downward spiral, right. but just artists that are fucking annoying and yeah. spend more time like promoting like 
something silly right. or just posting content that is meaningless in the grand scheme of things. It's like, dog, you're a musician. Mm -hmm. Put out music. Put it in the music, yeah. It's like, that's all I personally want. I don't need to feel like I'm friends yeah. with every single person that like I look up to or that I am a fan of artistically, right. regardless whether it's like a music or painting or 100%. whatever, you know, dancing. Like I just... I. The only people that I have the mental capacity to know personally are the people in my life mm -hmm. and other things that I'm a, like other people that I'm like a friend, like friend, like fans of. Exactly. That's, that, that's, I just want that. I just only want to engage with that in the way where it's like. I mean, yeah. exactly. Like, yeah. I, I, I legit. And it's, it's not, it's not, um, I'm not trying to demean. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat and like, I'm like, yo, how does anyone care about like the celebrity? So like, how do you? How does how do you care this much about this? How do you how are you this invested in this person's life? Not to say that you're not invested in your friends or personal life or your goals, but I just I feel mean, like it's it's. I mean, not to sound like uh, I'm mean, this is gonna be very like a uh, dad kind of old Bring it man on, sounding. Daddy o. It's weird, and this isn't like a prolific thought or anything, yeah. but it is weird that most of us know more about celebrities than we do like our neighbors oh, yeah. or like our even like Your I, prob I, I probably know more about Kim and Kanye West's relationship than my own mom and dad's yeah. <laughs> right yeah because you see yeah. it's weird no that is I mean and you probably you probably don't want to know that much about like you know your you know, there just might not be that much to know. Right. I mean, some people are just fucking boring. Yeah. I mean, Most they, people are boring. Yeah. They, they, and maybe that's part of the problem. People can't deal with the boring. Mm -hmm. So they need something, something yeah. going on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And that, it, it's all entertainment from everyone. I mean, from, uh, from the people outside looking in, but this is their real lives. But at the same time, you know, some aspects they choose to share. And, and, and what comes with that is ridicule and opinions. And, but yeah. You know, I could. I mean, I couldn't imagine being that big of a superstar and just, especially in social media age. But at the same time, it's the Kardashians and we and Kanye West, so they put some of that stuff out there on their own. But yeah, yeah bro. another thing that I don't particularly like about uh, social media and people sharing their opinions, granted, which sounds very hypocritical of me yeah. because that's just you know something that I do. Right, I just. There's something that's kind of toxic about the idea of everything needing to be better than the last thing that they engaged with. Mm. Like nothing's a, nothing could be mediocre anymore, right? Right? Like mm. if so, like there's always like oh yeah like I saw the new Batman movie like it was okay but it wasn't as good as this, right? Or like I listened to that new record like it was alright but it wasn't as good as this. Yeah. Like why can't we just be like yo you know I. I ate that Taco Bell. It was a taco. It was fine. Move yeah. on. I don't got to be like it wasn't as good as the fucking time I went to Dose in the South Side. Like that, that, things are allowed to be different. That's such a yo. You want to know? That's such a great point. And like you articulated it very well. And like I, the 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 only thing that I've heard in the in the in the last couple months that has I haven't heard in a while. I, and I'm not even a big fan of the Marvel universe, or like I don't I haven't seen all the movies but when the uh, what's the newest Spider-Man No Way Home yeah and I don't know if have you seen it yeah and like I haven't seen it but all I've I heard like real fans like yo this is the best one yet like da -da -da, like this and I, and I haven't heard that in a long time especially with something like Spider-Man where it's like it's so many variations of it you got so many people who love this one and this one yeah. and this one was like I've never heard such a unanimous like thing where it was like you get this new Spider-Man and you get this you know whatever this new universe and like they're like yo <laughs> this yeah, is the best was, one from old from old people to new people and I was like I've never seen anything like this in a long time yeah so, sa but to your point it's like yeah it's very same rare. thing I had noticed that was something that I had noticed I was like wow everybody's being positive about this yeah and like from an outsider and, yeah. I never really gave a fuck about the Spider-Man movies. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but I went to go see it, and I was like, "All right, this shit's fire. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's really good." Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. Like from like OGs to yeah. so, like people who love Zendaya. Like it's like, yo, unanimous. This one is the one. And I'm yeah. like, damn, from all of them Spider-Mans, like this is the one everyone loves. The thing that I like about 
comic book movies is whenever like people, a director, visual team, actors yeah. can lean into making it feel like a comic book. Mm. Like I don't really fuck with the um the newer Batman movies, like uh Christopher Nolan. Oh okay. I don't like them. I cause like it's like I I respect a dark, yeah. gritty, yeah. more like real world take. Right. But I'm much more like, give me the fucking Pow, Brett boom, Shoemaker, yeah, yeah. Batman fucking forever, right. Batman Returns, Batman the Tim forever, Burton. The, the best the, one. Yeah, all of those ones. Like, I like movies, the like comic book movies that look and feel like comic books. Okay. Gotcha. Um, you know, back to the Marvel Universe, uh, Shang-Chi. I know, I haven't seen it, but I know. Yeah, yeah that's, that is probably the best action movie that I've seen in well over 10 years. Damn. Okay. Like, I could see that being, like, a movie that, like, 10 years down the road from now, 15 years, I'm like, Big Trouble in Little China, Fifth Element, Shang-Chi. Dang, that's that's that's, that's a big nod. I love it. Yeah, and see, like, I, I, I wish I was, I, I got to get into this universe and, like, see where, what's going on. I mean, it feels like a comic book. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, honestly, like, the whole second half of the movie feels like some like Hayao Miyazaki spirited away yeah. type like mixed with Marvel Universe crazy action, action. high budget awesome special effects mm -hmm. like fucking cool movie yeah, it, so it, much fun and I, like Doctor Strange and the Guardians of the Galaxy all that stuff is so cool because it just feels like fun comic booky there's sad parts there's yeah. funny parts there's it, good fight scenes they're gonna be making money for so many oh, years yeah. like I, yeah. what's his new one morbius yeah what? yeah 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 i, I never heard even that. heard of this character i was like what so you know that's actually really interesting right so that is uh so there's like this weird like split off right now with marvel because you have okay. the disney run marvel okay and then the sony run marvel oh okay because Sony still has the rights to the Spider-Man stuff. Yeah. And any character, I could be not 100% right about this, but it's something similar to any character that made a debut in a Spider-Man comic. Mm -hmm. Sony has dibs on making a movie of that character. Got you. Okay. So now what is happening is that Sony is desperate to get some of that Marvel money. Yeah. So they're making movies for any fucking character that they have the rights to, whether you've heard of it or not. Got you. And like, okay, that, that makes, that makes, <laughs> that makes 100%. I mean, I mean, that makes 100% sense because like, even the rollout, it was, it was literally Jerry Leto, like explaining like <laughs> what this is. Like, it was like every commercial was Jerry Leto talking about like, yeah, this is a little bit of dark. This is a darker part of Marvel da, 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 and just kind of explaining why it's coming out. Cause I was like, and he kind of said like, this yeah. is a, uh, you know, one that people really don't know about. And I was like, yeah, I never heard of this character in my life yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a uh, lightweight fan. I, but, I have not heard anything positive about about it and can i tell you something but that doesn't mean it's not good can i'm I not going to be one of those people that i was just talking about i'm just saying i haven't heard anything good about it but yes tell me listen to me <laughs> listen to me i'm listening i'm listening and that was my question it was like yo why is jared little a part of this trailer i was like well, just put the trailer out and like it, uh, they probably did but every youtube ad i would see it was the tra it was like scenes from the movie along with jared little describing it and i was like i've never really seen this before so I, I i don't know it just seemed very weird the rollout my assumption without thinking about this too much yeah <laughs> is that what they're trying to do is play on like okay in pop culture what's big right now uh movie reviewers podcast vlogs so let's advertise the movie right. in that format yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah. like that kind of like sense. a one-on-one -on -one talking about something to get yeah. people get the nerdy people interested yeah right? okay because yeah. those are the those are the people that are going to give a shit right because they know yeah 100 percent. damn I, I i definitely got to get into this universe because uh my girl they've they've watched all of them and it's like in the right order like the correct yeah. order uh not not necessarily the way they came out but the way you're supposed to watch them yeah so i want to do it that way just so i can keep everything in line yeah i mean like even if you watch stuff in order there's some stuff like I, some stuff i like more than others i really really like um shang chi like i said right doctor strange the new doctor strange is coming out soon doctor strange is the fucking best yeah, and he's a part of this yeah no way home that no way yeah home. yeah yeah right. yep, okay. yep. Yeah, um yeah the Ant Man movies are a lot of fun. I heard they're really good. They're really, really fun. He, he's uh, Paul, Paul Paul Rudd. Rudd. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's just he's so fucking funny. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's I think there's 
there's a lot that's worth watching. And yeah. um, they also, I was really excited that they just put all of the, the Netflix Marvel stuff, mm -hmm. they took it off Netflix and now it's on Disney Plus. Disney Plus right. And I didn't think they were going to do it because some of that stuff is raw. Mm -hmm. But now they have it. So if you have Disney Plus, you could set if you want to watch mature content or not. Oh, and then awesome. you could watch like The Punisher and Jessica Jones and all that stuff, which if you never watched The Punisher, no, dog, I, I know it's like he's found because he killed and he just that goes shit for revenge. Rules. I, I, I have good. Who's the new? I haven't seen the newest one. Who's the new? Because I, I don't him. know that actor's name, but he's really good. You know, Venom is kind of. I've seen some like. Did I watch the full Venom? Or seen clips? I've seen clips of Venom, and I was like, Yeah, I, God I didn't watch Venom again. I've always had a very. I've always not been interested in like the Spider Man, Superman, oh. Batman. I always liked the weird, like the weird superheroes. Okay. When I was growing up, I, I don't, but that's I'm not saying I would never be like they suck. Fuck yeah. them. It's just not that. Just didn't appeal to me. I don't know why. Right, well, have you like I, as a Venom? Venom was funny and like uh, very graphic at yeah. the same time. I was like, he's ripping well, motherfuckers' heads off. I, I remember <laughs> my only. So it wasn't Venom, but I do remember for Super Nintendo, I had Maximum Carnage. The okay. video game where like you you play as Carnage and it's like a you know just like a walk through beat em up kind oh, of, right. of yeah, streets of, of rage game and yeah. like I remember like always thinking that like Carnage and Venom and those characters looked cool right yeah but same. I never read the books Me, or anything like right. that like and what's who who plays I can't remember is anybody's name he, he uh he plays Venom uh he's he's in so many things oh is that um the dude that was in Mad Max Fury Road he was Bane too Bane yeah. Uh, um, he was in he was in that movie Bronson, but his name's not Bronson. Damn, what is his name? Bronson's a good movie too. Fuck, what is that guy's name? That guy's cool. He, he's he, a fucking badass. He's a good actor. Yeah, and like, all right, we've said enough nice things about yeah, him. Yeah, whatever we, we could forget his name. Whatever his name is, but uh, <laughs> he, I, I ended up watching that Venom one day, and I was like, yo, this is funny as hell. But like, the 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 actions the action scenes are graphic. Yeah, but uh, can, I, can I use a bathroom real quick? Oh, right? totally. Oh my god. Yeah. We can pause right. for the bathroom. That's not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> We're back. The urine has been spilled. Yes, Lord. And We're here. Uh, yeah, we're good. We've we've <laughs> we've we've dried out. We can talk more. Oh my God! Okay, we back. So another, <laughs> another brew in hand. I think the only thing we, what we were talking about was um, oh Marvel and fucking Venom and yeah. fun and like that's the thing is I think that like that stuff you shouldn't approach it with a serious lens. Mm -hmm. You know, just sit down, watch it, have some fun, or shut the fuck up. Right. And I think that I need to maybe one day revisit, like, some of the Christopher Nolan movies mm -hmm. with a fun lens. Okay, Because, yeah. like, even though they're not meant to be fun, I'm sure I could still find fun in them. Yeah. I'm just, like, sitting down, like, already with a bad taste in my mouth because I know that he's kind of, like you know, a director's director and mm -hmm. there's all of this, like, intent and meaning and, you know nuance to his movies but yeah. i'm like it's batman dog no. <laughs> it's not fucking like you know some original story or something like he's done like what did he do uh, that one movie that inception was that him yeah, inception uh, which was interstellar just a, i love yeah, interstellar yeah so yeah. like that's cool well let me say so going, going back to your uh we were talking about uh harry potter world uh earlier and I feel like, you know how you were saying, like, yo, like, noticing the details and, like, you know, noticing that, noticing, like, that. that's the way I, I look at uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman. Because it's, like, even the obvious one, like, you know, my thought has always been, if you saw if you saw Batman and heard him talk like Bruce Wayne, you would know he's fucking Bruce Wayne. It's, like, you wouldn't even need to pull. And that's what, that, even that little detail, like, um, Christian Bell, like, oh, I'm Batman, like, like literally changing yeah, his voice. Yeah. And then, like, just, just the, the little attentions, the detail as far as, like, what would happen in the real world that wouldn't make sense. Like, you could get, you could pull off in a comic or whatever. I like that aspect of, like, the real world details of, like, yeah, like that. You would really have to do that to be a, 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 yeah. a mass crusader in Pittsburgh or Gotham. Yeah. I think that really it, ultimately just boils down to me not giving enough of a fuck about Batman <laughs> because there's been like somebody did like a like That's a it. like a real world take like a like a real world take web series Mortal Kombat okay and I it was called Mortal Kombat 
something. Yeah. I forget what it was, but I like Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is fun because mm. it's all like gritty and real. And yeah. it's like not too dissimilar from Nolan's approach to Batman. I just don't fucking like Batman. Bat, okay. That's Bat, really yeah. all it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When yeah. it boils down to it, I just don't like Batman. I feel like a lot of but, I feel like a lot of fans don't like I feel like a featherweight fans like Batman. But like, I, I like Tim Burton, and I yeah. like you know the cheesy Joel Shoemaker Batman, and I like the Batman animated series, right. like the OG one. Oh, you know, my but, birthday <laughs> at five was that. And yeah. I think that like maybe it's just like oh these are like because I really like the animation style. Yeah, of and that it's show. Just, you're, it's comic, just like, yeah. So yeah. I think that it's I think it really just depends on. There has to be something that I'm connected with. I just really don't like Christopher Nolan that much, <laughs> and I really don't like Batman that much. Get out. Damn, like I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a. Big, but that's just me. No, that's I hear me. you. Like I, I love, like I don't know. I, I like Christopher Nolan movies because it's like I, uh, I have to watch them a few times because I like some stuff goes over my head and I watch it again. I'm like, ah, oh, or or I read something online and I go back sure. and watch it and I'm like, ah, oh, I see. Sure, that. I could see that. But like. I don't know if you, if you I, I like I don't I like Interstellar a lot. And you know, like, it could be one of those things where like you ever have something that like like you didn't fuck with when you were younger, and then you come across it later in life, and you're like, damn, what was I thinking? I love this Tetris. It's like Tetris for me. I don't know why I didn't fuck with Tetris. When I, was younger. I love Tetris. No, well, I don't know. It just didn't it didn't grab me. And like when I got older, I was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. I think that Tetris is one of the few things that can make me forget about how awful the world is for like five minutes. <laughs> you zone out, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I zone out hard. Yeah, I'm like, yo, why didn't I have this on the Game Boy? I was playing dumb, sh I was playing dumb stuff on my Game Boy Color. If I, can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing all the dumb stuff. But, you uh, know, so whenever you're like engaging with cinema yeah, and like, you know, you're thinking about like, there's probably some part of you that's imagining like yourself being behind the lens, right? Because you spend a lot of time behind a lens. Yeah, I love movies. And yeah. I'm curious like how that stuff bleeds into like your work or your influence because like a Christopher Nolan Batman movie or even like an Interstellar yeah. is a lot different than like taking a picture of someone in a dope jacket on Forbes Avenue, right? Yeah. But how do you how do you bring those worlds together? Yo, I, I, I honestly, yo, that's a that's a great question. Man, I'm so happy I get to art like I get to articulate this cuz it's like um the cinema, I've, I've, I've always loved movies. Like, I've, like from romantic comedies to action, I just love movies. And like, I think it's the, the it's the romantic side of it. Like, I, I love because um, again, it might not even be this. It might not be. It might not be about what the person's wearing. But I just took a picture recently with this. Uh, it was like a high school couple, and he was like his girl was laying on his chest, and he had his arm around her, but you could only see his eyes. And it just, it, it, you know, sure, there, yeah. It's just like a romantic sight. He, it's a poetry, he, right? He didn't have yeah. any cool clothes on, but it was just like I couldn't see his mouth. I know it. You just know what's going on. He's like he just holding this girl, act of love, and like, why is this dude taking a picture of me? You know, it was just like that. I knew that was going to be the moment, and that's what I wanted. And I feel like my just watching movies and like just you know, however, however, director wants you to feel in certain moments. I feel like that's where it bleeds into what I do is like, yo, I know how, I know how I feel and I feel like I know how the the viewer is going to feel when they see yeah, the picture. I do feel like, you know, as a, I would imagine as somebody in your position that's uh, taking a lot of photos that yeah. um, highlight fashion, mm -hmm. even, it, but that's, it's like you're, there's more of a story that's being told. Yeah than just what the outfit somebody's wearing. Like, right. I've never looked at anything that you've posted mm -hmm. and felt like I was looking at an advertisement. I yeah. always feel like it's a story, Thank right? You. Like, awesome. where yeah. is this person going? Why is that? Why, what, what is happening on yeah. this day? You know, like, because you always think, like, this looks like, sometimes there may be like, this looks like a really normal person in a not normal outfit. Mm -hmm. Why? Right. You know, what is going on with this? Yeah. Or that, like, maybe somebody that is just in a unique situation like there's nothing they're not wearing anything cool but like the picture you were just telling me about right. but that's like a cool cinematic moment like what's going on with these two exactly you know like i remember like not a fucking care in the world probably just hanging out yep. happy to be with each other exactly. simpler times 
I remember when shit was that simple. I can't just fucking sit around with my arm around someone anymore. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Like you, How the fuck do you have time to do this? I, 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 rem- I remember, <laughs> like, I remember the issue. It's a feeling because I, like, it's really, like, it's, it's like, um, I remember, like, I had a curfew and then it was like, this girl I was talking to, like, she was leaving. She had to go to, de- she had to leave out of town for a long time and it was just like, I'm breaking oh, yeah. curfew. I don't care what the consequences are. Like, I'm, we're, we're kicking it tonight. And like, you know, just just those feelings that everyone yeah. can relate to. Dude, I feel. Yeah. I remember. In a photo. So, when yeah. I was in high school, there was a girl that I met online that went to school in Carrick. Mm-hmm. I went to Woodland Hills. Got you. Okay. So we used to take the bus in the downtown. Yeah. And we were too young to do anything. So we would just be like, by the time you fucking go to McDonald's yeah. and you go to like the bookstore <laughs> and whatever. Yeah. You know, you're just like sitting on a bench, like waiting with her till her bus comes. Yep. And that could be like the situation those kids were in. Exactly. And that makes me think of like, or it brings me back. Yeah. Yo, that is, that is beautiful. Yes. That is exactly what I, uh, whatever, who, what, whatever the viewer's interpretation is like, or whatever I feel, but that's exactly what I, 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 I value it. What I want the the viewer to feel damn man yo yes yeah i have a lot of like nostalgia with like downtown pittsburgh proper as Mm -hmm. useless as it is (laughs) i have you know (laughs) unless unless you want to get I it's don't coming. know. It's unless coming. unless you want to get a media, mediocre taco. No, I'm pretty- telling you, Penn Ave, <laughs> Penn Ave is coming. Yo, the, the, the food scene down there is coming. It's coming, baby. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I say <laughs> I say this in jest. Uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh is downtown. Pittsburgh proper is a lot cooler now than it was when I was in high school. Yeah. Um, but it is still. It does leave a lot to desire to be desired in terms of arts and entertainment. I think it's For trying, sure. but yeah. I feel like it is gate kept mm-hmm. by people that don't have any fucking idea what's going on in arts and entertainment. It's a fact. I mean, like they, like that, that's very true. Um, but they, they, they are trying, it's just getting the right people in position, the right people to be heard. And, and like, I don't even, I, I, feel, I think the right people exist. Mm-hmm. I think it's just being willing to take a fucking chance. Yeah. And like yeah. not go with the safe option for once. Yeah. Everything that they fucking do down there yeah, well, is so safe and well, I get it. Well, what I've noticed, even even with me, like even with me outside of like um, like music, it's always been like just a, a younger person, whether it be like you know the social media manager or even an intern, just like hey, we need. <laughs> he may smoke weed, he may smoke, but we need to work with this person because da 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 da. And like that's how I get it. It's always the younger, the younger person in the building telling the older higher ups about what I do, what I bring to the table. But um, but 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 yeah, I I I I feel like we we are lagging a little bit, and I feel like there is that that gatekeeping, especially of what we want, yeah. especially what the audience overall wants. <laughs> I remember, but. fucking a few years ago now. At this point, I went to one of these stupid like I don't even remember what it was called, but it was like some Pittsburgh independent music scene sort of coalition thing that was happening okay. to try to help brighten up arts and entertainment. Yeah. And when I went, I went to this event and there was a lot of people there that I knew Mm -hmm. from like the rock scene and rock adjacent scenes, whether that be like punk or heavy metal or even like hip hop, which I would now consider rock adjacent in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And what are we going to do for these communities? Oh, well, we can't do so much because of, you know, noise ordinances or like the stigma against these genres of music. I'm Mm -hmm. like, everybody that bothered to come Mm. to this event are people in these communities because these are the people that care right there you're not going to find somebody that actually cares more about live music than a rock music fan right (laughs) so it's like you know granted like it's like there it's like okay like we're gonna help live music by you know helping raise money so like some dumb restaurant downtown Mm -hmm. can get a pa and somebody could do an acoustic set which that's great for them right but that's not helping anybody that's in this fucking room yep no you're you're, no you're exactly right it's It's, not like the space isn't around mm -hmm. there's so much unused space but nobody wants to take the chance on a concert venue i know it's high risk yeah and low return but but it's and even i think it's something that the city needs yeah and And if they want to be like it's like an, it's like a social investment to get put on the map so we're not looked at in the way that we are. Right. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast where people look at Pittsburgh as being like, 
a lack of culture. For sure. And it's because it's the city that's not willing to take chances. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I just wish all of our sports teams would stop being good because then <laughs> right. people would get fucking desperate for art. Yeah. Yo, that, yo, I can't, that is such, I can't articulate any better myself. And like, I don't mean that genuinely. I'm happy that we have great sports teams, no, but, no, but in a way that's just like where all the attention goes. That's, that's, and I get it. It makes a fucking ton of money. Yeah. But it's safe. No, that, that's 100% fact. And it's literally, it's literally these, 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 uh, these companies with the money to spend, to take chances and to get behind these like, you know, these underground things, not even underground, but just things that are artistic and that are outside of sports and that are out, that doesn't involve a painting of, you know, Franco Harris or that doesn't like involve sure. like, you know. Oh, the, the Three Rivers Arts Festival yeah. where 50% of the inventory is pictures of the shit that you're looking at. I exactly. can turn around and see that. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, and, 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 and you're making like, Yo, it's it's such a great point, but it's just I think it's on. Um, it's just keep pressing. It's literally it's just like yo, just and, and oh I, yeah, that's and the I, thing too is like what the fuck have I done to be involved with these communities? Nothing. Mm, okay, that, that that's self other, accountability, right? I could do better instead of just yelling on a microphone. And and that's the other side too. And one thing and and one thing I've learned, um, even when, so when it, um I did creatives drink with uh my guy cody baker we did it for a couple of years he still does it but i but we 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 know we threw these i think we talked about that we threw these free events yeah and like we talked about the the, the vibe <laughs> but it, it, it was literally we didn't think that we, we didn't think we could we didn't think we could get a venue for free like literally like just break down a plan of what we wanted to do we just wanted to get a whole bunch of young people, whole bunch of people into one space to turn up and experience different different uh alcoholic brands, different, you know, vendors, whether it be clothing or whatever, inside their space so they could have more um eyes on them. I mean, it was just it was so far fetched that everything could be done for free out of eyes. Like, you know, everyone's just getting eyes. So we we're 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 getting the venue for free. We're getting this. We're getting the vendors for free. Everything, and we just didn't think that we. Uh, and actually, we did. We we got paid. Like we we got we got paid off of that just for for eyes. And it was just like we didn't think that would we that could happen. It seemed so far fetched. And the, and I'm saying this because like I I talked to a lot of people, and there's a lot of doubt. I I, I feel like people have a lot of good ideas, and they have a lot of gung ho, and they're like and they'll talk shit. They'll talk shit for days. Like it'll be like, yo, this and that, this and that, but they won't do nothing. They won't, they won't take that chance because oh, it's no hope. Nah, they don't even they think this or that. Granted, it might be true. It's, it's definitely tough, but like I feel like a lot of it is um motherfuckers not taking that step to do it. And I'm not trying to get mean, but I just feel like a lot of people I, I meet, like they'll talk so much shit about this it, and that and like they have so many good ideas but they don't take that step yeah. to do it to even reach out to these higher you know whatever the but. way that the way that i look at this yeah. is like i understand that it, it can be really really scary to take a step in a certain direction oh yeah but if you've been doing art for any certain period of time and you haven't like made it to a point where you feel successful mm -hmm. you've already been fucking up in one direction yeah What's the danger in trying to fuck up in another direction? Either yeah. it works or you just fucked up again. If you're still hit, fucking up yeah, yeah. or you're not. But just take the chance. If it hits your spirit though. Like, I mean, like, even like, I mean, I guess you're in the sense of like, do you mean like as far as like, yo, I I, I need to do this maybe to like, get on. You've been fucking up by not doing anything. Yeah. Oh, right. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. yeah, yeah. fuck up, but at least be able to say that like, if it, if it doesn't go your way, well, I, I, tried. I tried. I fucked up again, but I tried. That's it. That's it. Like, yo, like, you, it's okay to look like an asshole or a failure. Like, yo, it's like, it's okay. <laughs> this is another thing. The thing that I think people are worried about looking like a failure. Yeah. In, in arts, most of the time, if you are a failure, nobody's looking at you. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yo. Like, nobody's going to notice that you failed by, 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 besides you. Exactly, man. In it, art, anyways, you know, it's not like this is like a sports game where like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people watch yeah. you miss that shot. Most yeah. of the time, nobody's paying attention to you to begin with. Yeah. So Look, you just got to make that chance and either people no. notice or they won't.
And to every artist, and I'm sure every artist, like I'm sure you, you guys may have tried this already or whatever, but just on a base level, and, uh, and let's just let's even talk about, like it's um, it's it's all about that step, and like it it, it is hard, and that and like it is anxiety that comes with it of, you know, the possibility of no, sending an email and waiting twelve days to get a response, or you know, following up and still not getting a response until your third email. You know, it's just a lot of things that are scary and annoying yeah. that come with it. But yeah. uh, but it's um, it's easier said than done. But it's it's literally just that initiative to like. If you really, if you are really invested in this culture, if you really want to see things pop off, like it starts with you and your idea for the community as a whole, whether it be photography, whether it be rock, punk, whatever. And it's already, I feel like things are already happening, but it's just like, if you, it's all on you to like, yeah. to, 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 to put your idea in the pot to like take it to the next level. Cause everybody has different ideas, but like. Take that step, man, to put, to put your idea in the pot so more people get exposure and it's a service. Yeah, I mean, the to, thing yeah. that I took away from that event, you know, going back to the event that was supposed to help us, the only yeah. thing I took from it was like, nobody's going to help us. We have yeah. to help ourselves. Yeah, and, it's, and, and I feel like that's the way it, in this city. I, I feel like until you, until they you know, see you doing your shit, it's like, oh, oh, well, we the thing, it. The thing though too, oh, yeah, and this may be another conversation. Yeah is that even in a bigger city with infrastructure yeah. that does have air quote help, right. I think unless you're really doing something yourself, you can get really caught up just being in the bubble of that city. Mm -hmm. Like how big do you want to get? Right. I think if you're doing something for yourself, it's a lot easier to expand. Because mm -hmm. there are people that I think are air quote big for Pittsburgh in different right. aspects of things, but sure. all they do is here. Because right. all they know is the things here. Mm -hmm. And then those people that help them have become a crutch yeah. in some ways. And I'm sure that's no different than in a Brooklyn or a Chicago or yeah. in Atlanta where people get caught up in these really good, healthy communities right. because they know the right people. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to reaching outside and doing something that doesn't involve those people that have held their hand, yeah, now it's a problem. No, no, no. That, that, that's a fact. And, and I, I feel like I feel like this, I feel like that's a good challenge, though. Like I, I feel like I mean, and even even on a personal, I feel like that's um on on the on the endeavors I have on the endeavors I have. Next, that's where I feel like I'm at. It's just like you know, I feel like that's a good problem. It's like yo, I like you good here. Like you know, you you accom you accomplish your goals, and like, I'm just talking about me. Like you accomplish your goal, and it's just like. You know what's what's the next level? Uh, all according to what you want as an in, in, individual artist, but it's like, all right, well, let's see if we can let, let's let's take it outside of this city to bring even even more eyes, and which is definitely more challenging. But like, that's the beauty of the of that hard ass task. <laughs> yeah, I think that <laughs> like, I think that I was gonna I ask whatever, like yeah. about uh you know the the future of the the keep. Pittsburgh Dope brand, yeah, yeah. right? My question is, how far does yeah. Pittsburgh stretch? And like, how does that brand grow into something that is outside of Pittsburgh? Because I think that we're almost talking about like potentially two different things. Because yeah. like, I don't know how different Keep Pittsburgh Dope can really be besides yeah. what it is. And the fact that it is what it is is what makes it great. No, yes, no, that... It, that's a yeah. That's an awesome question, and it's it's it was always. Um, I had a meeting. Um, I, I I got some things in the works for that, and like my background is in radio, and and talking to people, and I like that's why I admire what you do, and like you know people who are really. My thing is quality, and like and like that's why I admire what like that's why I love that's why I wanted to be on here the first time. Like in this, I was like, yo, this, this motherfucker is doing it the right way. Oh, like, thank you. Yeah, uh, no doubt, and like you can tell like your preparation and like everything, like even just your environment that we have here, I feel comfortable as soon as I walk in the door. Just the video game lights make me feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's just like, but I, I, t I can tell you, you you know what uh, what you like and the quality that, and the time that it takes to put something out of this quality. You know, it takes a lot of time and editing, da, da, da. But like my background's in radio and that's where I had a meeting a couple months ago uh, with somebody who, uh, he's a manager to like a lot of like, musicians celebrities and i was telling them my idea and he literally stopped me in my tracks and he was like nah don't don't 
keep keep Pittsburgh dope is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you do photos in Pittsburgh, capture people in Pittsburgh, you do your influencer stuff, da 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 da. And he was like, that's what that is. And he was like, if you if if you're trying to have the impact that you say you want to have, and you say you want to bring eyes back to Pittsburgh, and you say you want to be, you know, whatever, he was like, it's it's time to, uh, you know, you. I've always been branding myself, but he was like, it's time to venture off in that other scary realm of like branding myself outside of the city. So it yeah. can't it can't be. And he was he was naming other brands that are pigeonholed to here. They can only go so far. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they. It can only go so far. You might have to be from here. Like the or, Steel City shirts and shit like any, that. Yeah, yeah ex- like anything. It's just like, it can. All, it, it has a cap. So it's just like, he really kind of, he kind of smacked me in the back of my head on my further endeavors and what I had li- what, I, what I have lined up. And uh, that's where I'm at now. It's just like expanding outside the city as tough as it's going to be, but also giving other people opportunities. I mean, like. In the city. It's like, I don't think it's that, I mean, I don't think, I mean, everything's hard. Nothing's fucking easy. Yeah, yeah, But for sure. I don't think for somebody that is as good at being a visual storyteller yeah. as I feel you are, mm-hmm. I feel like you could tell your story anywhere. Yeah. Because like, you're just um, somebody that's able to observe environment and situations in a way and the world extends past Pittsburgh. Facts. Right? Yeah. And if you're able to make Pittsburgh interesting, yeah. I'm sure that you can make some other places interesting. Now, if you could pull off Keep Toledo dope, I would be very <laughs> impressed. Well, well, let me, well, let, <laughs> well, well, let me say something. I, I, feel like, I feel like a platform like yours and like and even, you know, outside of the audio aspect, I, I'm such a visual, like you said, I'm a visual person, so I love seeing what you do visually and how how um, organized and how quality it is as far as the clips and you knowing when to drop the clips. I feel like, you know, I feel you know, your guests have been limited to uh, Pittsburgh. You might have, you, I'm sure you've had other guests outside sure, of Pittsburgh, yeah. but like, I feel like, who, who, who's, who's your favorite, like, celebrity, popular person? I might not even know them, but like. Um, that's a intimidating question i'm not really sure or, or who would who, if i have who was your ideal like to have on this on on the podcast oh okay i think like you know in music somebody like a like an artist like who you may not be familiar with but there's a gentleman by the name of mike Patton. okay who is a kind of a pretty popular somewhat legendary figure in yeah. the underground rock scene yeah Um, I think that would be cool just because Mm. he's been a part of so many different kinds of music. He's been Mm. in like a billion bands and all different genres of music for like his whole life. And like he's still doing it. Everything he does is always like interesting. Even if I like it or I don't like it, it's Mm -hmm. still like him. He just has a very unique voice. You know, so like I'm always like interested in talking with people that just have a unique take on the world. And it really doesn't even matter like how popular or not popular they are. Well, no, well, yeah, exactly. Well, well, just, uh, I mean, just your favorite, and I'm sure you've already, I'm sure like you've been, you've been plotting or just, you know, maybe not, but just like, yo, if I could have this motherfucker on the show, like how would I do that? And I feel yeah. like you've already done half the battle. Like, you know, you, you've already set yourself, how many episodes in, like you've, you, like you've already, you've already set yourself up for that moment. Like yeah. it's, it's almost like, you know, you you've made the, I, you made the you made the job I, ten times easier. Yeah, I very yeah, I very rarely go out of my way. I don't like really cold email people. You no. know, it's always just like I have to have some sort of a connection with them. And, and let me say this, but let, I will abuse it once I have it. And, and not to cut you off, so <laughs> yeah. like Mike Patton, right? Yeah. So like, yeah, of course, like you, yeah, of course, not abuse anything. Like you, it has to be kind of like, yo, all right, this is the time. Like you know what I'm saying? But like, say Mike Patton, whatever band he's in at the moment, has a show in Pittsburgh, and it's like. <laughs> all right let's reach out to the management team I'll, co- I'll come to the green room like whatever you would have to do or sure or, so uh, yeah i was gonna say i've done i've been in situations like that a couple times okay, yeah, yeah it's always weird yeah because okay. the other thing too that i find is that it's actually really hard to do what i do mm-hmm. with people that have been being interviewed their whole life because mm, okay, even though i think that 
I feel confident in being able to have a conversation that's going to be unique from what the typical person's going to ask them. Right. They're still coming at me with that energy. Mm -hmm. And it could be really hard. I mean, like, even when I'm out of town, the last thing that I fucking want to do is deal with anybody. Facts. You know, I just want to get where I'm going. And then hope go there's the- a shower. <laughs> hope I can get some food <laughs> and just fucking chill. Right. No, I don't want to fucking talk to some ding dong with a podcast from Pittsburgh. 100%. So that's like my empathy. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Some, it's creating a barrier. No, no. Because also there have been times where like I've gotten to a place early and I'm bored and I'd fucking do anything. Right. You and- know what I mean? I'm like talking to somebody cleaning up the bar. So how are you doing? You know, yeah. just like fucking like. And desperate I, for a connection. And I guess that's where my romanticizing things comes into play. Cause I'm like, all right, you know, you know, you got your show and it's like this, 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 this part, this Mike Fatten, you know, you do, you go through all the avenues to like, hey, this is what I do. Here's the clips, da, 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 da. In my mind, I'm just like, Mike Patton sees this like very qualified young Pittsburgh dude, young Pittsburgh dude doing his thing. And he's just like, you know what? Yeah, maybe. I am, like I always, I, I, I always romanticize things like that, and I'm just like, but and I always look like he was, you, know, you were ready, like you were ready for that moment for him to come up to Troy Hill in in the suburban, like with his driver, like who would have thought? But he saw the work you put in, and he could relate because he remembers when he was doing that. Like, I, sure, I, I always, I always it's look possible. at it like that way. It's possible, but 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 at your point. <laughs> You're right. Like these these guys have been doing it, but it's just like you never know. But that is a great point, though. Yeah, like they they they've been doing it a long time. So yeah, I know. think that yeah, I'm I've been in this like really interesting middle ground area of trying to figure out like how and when I want to expand the podcast. Because also like I've had yeah. some like for the show like pretty popular people yep. on the show, and the episodes don't really do any better or worse than other episodes. Right. No. Because, like, when you're interviewing somebody that gets interviewed all the time. Yeah, it's just another one. It's another interview. And yeah. then people are like, well, I don't know who the fuck that is that right. are friends of that, 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 that know that band. Right. And then, like, my local fan base that normally listens to the show, yeah. if they see somebody that's not, like, Pittsburgh-centric or they don't know them, they're going to be like, eh, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. Regardless right. if they're in one of the biggest metal bands on the planet, right. they just don't know. Is a fact. So then it's kind of like, well, what's happening here? Yeah. You know, because it's like, at this point, I, all I'm doing is stroking my ego, which mm. is not the type of thing that I like to do. Facts. It's like, I'm not offering the artist anything. Right. It's not helping me any, mm. but I could tell my friends that I had so-and-so on my podcast. Very true. Big fucking deal. Yeah. Like, and I guess that's a, like, where does, like, have you, have you figured that out yet? Is, or like, have you like, just as far as like, or no, is it- I think ultimately there's still, um, there's still a place where the podcast isn't at yet mm-hmm. um, in terms of like overall listener, but let's like listenership. Yeah. Uh, in order for me to even feel justified in messaging certain people. Yeah. You know yo, what I'm saying? Not, yo, can I, can I, I just had the, yo, this is so random okay. in, the middle, in the middle of the podcast. And I, I, I do, do you do live shows? Have you ever done like, like live podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Like, have you, um, and this might be totally off base, but like the whisper nest. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, that would be a great spot for something like that. My bro, like I literally, I can see you on that. Like I, whoever guests, like sure. Yo, like, I just see a vibe. Like people, people like drinking their brews. Like and you guys, you know, talking and like people laughing. Like, damn, I don't know why I just thought of that. But anyway, yeah, random was fuck whisper nest. Let's make it happen. Yo, somehow, like, I don't. That'll be the third time you're on the show. We'll hey, do it. If it's me, let me know. But yeah. like, if it's not, like, I can, I can, oh my God, I can totally see, like, that being crazy. Yeah. And especially next to the Smalls Theater. Anyway. That'd be cool. Yeah. I, but, okay. Uh, with all of that, <laughs> I think that we should probably put a cap on this. I'm actually I'm supposed, to, ramble, I'm yeah. supposed to start another podcast in four minutes. Oh, snap. Okay. That's okay. I don't even, I don't think they're here yet. It ain't a big deal. I'm not in right. a rush. <laughs> but, um, I think yeah. that I think I think I think I think that I think that the the live pod there's there's a lot of opportunity to do things and like yeah. honestly I'm still kind of like getting my footing back to even like doing the yeah. podcast again yeah. because for such a long time it was all remote and then like I wasn't doing guests for a little bit yeah. and it's just like 
like what do I want this show to be? Like right. what the show is is kind of like changed and evolved, which thing that's naturally what things mm-hmm. do over time. And I've been doing the show for a long fucking time. I've been yeah. doing this show just about as long as you've been doing Keep Pittsburgh Dope. Yeah, yo. And, and it shows, man. Like it, it shows the um like I, and I feel like I've I was I'm on late. Like, I mean, I feel like I've I've caught on late, but it's like it shows. Like that's what I'm saying. It shows like well, your, your season, your seasoning shows because it's, it's like it, how much time you take with with how it looks. And yeah, everything. it's like, I would, like, I, I'm, i there's a big thing with social media now, and we talked about this earlier in a bit with, like, how everybody feels like they have to be on all the time. Right. I think a lot of creators feel like they have to post all the time. Yeah, And if they sure. don't post something, they're going to get lost. Like, mm-hmm. I would rather not post something yeah. for a fucking month than put out one piece of garbage content. Bullshit, yep. And I, I'm in that boat, too, because I get caught up, and I'm like, damn, I ain't posting in five days, but, like, I literally haven't Nobody caught cares. anything on the street. Like Nobody you know, cares. Yeah, and I'd rather, I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather you exactly. They don't no, even care. Nobody cares. They they got they don't even dog, you're not that Dude, exactly. I didn't record a podcast for two months. Yeah. Nobody said anything. <laughs> I see people and they're like, yo, like been right. keeping up with the podcast. It's good. I'm like, have you? Yeah. What Whatever. Mean? No. Or well, like, you know, or just like people like, but they're thinking about, you know, they listen to something that you did, you know, a a while back and it's still in their brain. Right. Nobody's going to engage with you every single day of their life. Exactly. Like I feel like if you can make a like a um some sort of a connection with what a person mm-hmm. that is meaningful to them, yeah. like once a year, they're never they're not going to forget about you. Right. You don't got to fucking indulge them every fucking day yeah. or every week it's fine people got a lot going on they do and, and that's so funny you say that because it's like only like i've you know there's so many um for example there's a lot of like kanye interviews or whatever but like i've like one that sticks out is that zane low interview it's like that one who's like if i say i'm a god I'm not I like what do you, if I'm a pimp, the, you know, all that rambling, but like I, I re, he does so many, but I remember that one. But 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 again, like I feel like every interview is important. Like you there's always different gems in, in, in each interview that is that is done. But yo, I'm just gonna say this, man. Like, yo, you you uh you inspire. You've inspired me, you inspire a lot of like people who know about your 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 podcast and the 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 audio and the visual aspect. Like you you uh I think you do it the best in this city. Thank you. And, and, I that, and like, that. again, I don't know. I don't know every. I don't know every podcast in the city, but the the one I've seen visually, like you, uh, you do it well, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate no, it. No doubt. And it, it's, you know, and that's. Yeah. I mean, that's really just a side effect of doing something for a long time by yourself. You'll yeah. get good at it. Yeah. If and, you give a fuck. And just that's doing a, it the way you really want to do it. Yeah. yeah. And that's you know, it's like I'm glad that uh, to hear that you think it's cool and that other people think it's cool. Yeah. Um, that it is, it is work and time and lot, it's, it's sure. really just like, I don't know. I just like doing it. Yeah. And that's the, and I don't like putting out bad content. Yeah. So you combine those two things and that's what this is. And that's how it might take, and, and, and it takes the long road because you ain't doing no silly thing. You ain't doing nothing silly. Just like that's, that's the long road, but that's how you get the, the, the bag you want. Like that's how you get like the, Sure. The thing that really will support you and take you to the next level, doing it the right way. I think that, you know, the one of the positive things that came out of this whole, like, pandemic was the experimentation of content creation, mm-hmm. right? Where I had the time to do a lot of things that I never was super interested in doing before, like doing live streams mm-hmm. and uh, more, like, nuanced like video vlogging and things like that. I just had time and cameras. (laughs) So we're just doing a bunch of shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. But after doing it for like a year, I was like, I never want to do this again. This Mm. isn't what I like doing. Right. You know, it's like, I like to create art, not just talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the podcast is about the furthest I want to go. It's the threshold of me wanting to share and contribute to my community. Got you, yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. other than that, the only other contributions that I want to make to the art community is going to be like my actual music right. and my actual art. Other than that, leave me alone. Other than that, this. <laughs> and this is more than most people do. Yeah. Anyways, so the fact that I'm trying to like beat myself up to do more is no. crazy. No, no, that, that, and, that, and that's, a, that's a great 
point, like self aware, like you know what you want, like you know what, like hey, I, this to this point it's great, or I'm a, I'm over, I'm gonna lose my shit, I'm gonna be mean, I'm gonna be like it's too much, it's not what I want. At least you know what you want, man. Um, yeah, I think that it's yeah, knowing what you want to do is like super, super duper important. Yeah, um, I think that a lot of times maybe you get this too from mm-hmm. people that are like friends or acquaintances that are like, yo, I'm interested in getting into photography. Like, what do I got to do? Mm-hmm. And the way that's like, I'm interested in doing a podcast. What do I got to do? And I'm are just you? Like, like, it's like, are it's, you? It's like, well, the first thing that you need is free and it's to give a shit. Right. Like, do you want to do this? Yeah. Or are you just, you it's, see what I'm doing or you want that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it's like, of course, but like, yeah. It's like, do you really want to do this? Do you want them? Sure. The low views, like, like up, you know, whatever. And how... How, <laughs> my friend, yeah. how do you feel about, this is like me talking to one of those people, not you, yeah. oh, but no, it's no. like, uh, how are you with compromise and sacrifice? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's like, I de- it's like, it's really simple. It's like, yes, yes. To do these sorts of things, you're going to need money and equipment. Yeah. Like your paycheck, okay. well, your how- paycheck going towards microphones. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, oh, like, you know, I don't make the money that I need to at the job that I have to do this thing. If you give enough of a shit, find a way to make some more money. Facts. And that's, and going, a, lot of, a lot of people, when it comes to that realization with, with, that, with all that goes into it, they don't want to take that and, step. They'd and, rather go out. And I know, get it. And I get it too. Yo, yeah. And the thing too is like, I get it. That also, life is expensive. Right, for sure. And a lot of times, there could be somebody that really has that fucking passion, but also it. has... Rent. kids and a family yeah. and all this shit you also don't need the nicest fucking equipment to make a lot of shit work right and and and, and that's a I mean, fact you can buy like you know that fucking camera is the first sony a7 the a- first damn. A, it's a7 that's it it ain't yeah. no two or three or s it's an a7 damn and i had no and that's idea. the stock lens it's yeah. fine oh. for what i'm doing i got that thing for like 400 bucks that's all you i need. mean that's a lot of money to some people but when you're talking about getting a DSLR, you know, a fucking Sony A7S or an A7 III, they're like fucking two, three grand. Right. With everything. It is. It's like, and it's like the other thing too is like the uh, the fucking other cameras that I got, like this one that's on your boy right now, like this, is a, you know, it's another just little cheap point and shoot camera. Oh, and yeah. so it's like, you can do these things. The fucking computer that I'm recording on, I bought from Best Buy for $300. Mm-hmm. That monitor was a hundred bucks. Dog. I mean, like this whole setup, like like all the cameras and computer and stuff's under two thousand dollars. Yep. And it, I mean, like it'd be real easy to be like, yeah, I could have a fucking ten, twenty grand podcast studio set up. Right. And I, but and you can find ways to do it cheap if you want to. If it, it if you can, really want to make it happen, you know, you make it happen. Like, did you start out with a super nice fucking no, camera, bro? Like, <laughs> it took. No, I had the trashest camera. I wasn't even good. Like, like I, but I. But I, I but I understood, and here's go back. It, it, it goes back to it goes back to what I like to see. Honestly, like I understood that, at least for me, I knew no one was doing this in the city. That was my first advantage. I knew no one was capturing people on the street, so I was like, "All right, nobody's doing this." But at the same time, I knew I wasn't that good. With that being known, I knew that people would see my progress. Though they would become a fan of that too. It was like. Yo, I remember when this month he was it was trash, and now it's this like p- taking people on that journey and gaining fans that way. Like I remember when you know you were filming in your bathroom, and now you're in the living <laughs> sure. room. Like you know, just just that progress too is like is that that be- well, that, that gains you a fan base and real well, fans. I think in an interesting way, like whoa, whoa, and it wow, an interesting way. No, no, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Nuance, speaking, dialect. With what you do yeah. is the core of it is the story. Right. And the quality of the photo isn't always as important as the story. Mm-hmm. As like if you got a good song, it may not be the best recording. If it's a good song, it's still going to smack in a certain way. Right. Soldier Boy. Right. <laughs> not great recordings. Yeah, but it hits. Legend. Yeah. A legend. Yeah, for sure. And even if you want to get a little bit more avant-garde in the hip-hop world, the early Odd Future stuff, early oh Tire the Creator, Never early seen Earl. Like it. Never seen anything like all it. All that stuff, from a technical perspective, recorded poorly. Yep. 
but the songs were good and it created a vibe and it did its own thing, right? Mm-hmm. So with what you're what you're doing, you know, like you're still telling a good story. Yeah. And that's what's going to get people in. And if the quality of those good stories increases, then even better, yeah. Even better. Right. You know. It, 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 you're 100% right, but like I I I love your uh I love your outlook on it, that, and that's and that that that's this. If you really want this, if that's, uh, and I feel like you know, this is your calling at at this moment in time. Like you know, when you're fifty, maybe something else, whatever. But like at this moment in time, this is what you really want to do. <sighs> like you you you'll legit find a way, no matter how you, you'll find a way. That that's the thing, and it's hard. It's hard. It's hard spending yeah. your own money. It's hard spending your own money that you know could go so, towards something else, like. You can like yo. You know that you're gonna like. You can buy something now. I need this microphone, but you're gonna be laid on rent. Like shit, like that is like you. You really gotta want it. But anyway, but yeah. I mean, I th- you, th- I think that, it pays off. You know, I would say you know the other. It's like I always try to tell people. It's like, look, if you really want to do this and you want to do it cheap, like you know, I can't tell you how many times I've like put together like lists with links for people of like good affordable equipment that they mm-hmm. could buy that's not that much yep. i think out of anybody that's ever asked me advice on how to start a podcast i don't think any of them ever have yeah i don't know if maybe i just give bad advice no or maybe if my advice is too real i really don't know nah man like and, 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 <laughs> and, no no and i i, I even like i i, I even, i'm getting i'm getting more comfortable even having these conversations because i felt like it, it and i guess my tone something i'm like so intense about it but i always felt like i'm I'm not I'm not trying to talk down, but it's just I really want people to like do what they were meant to do on this planet fucking earth. Like cause we're only here for so long. That idea you have is bigger than what you think. Yeah. You know, and it's it's not in your head for no reason. But along with that idea comes those steps that your friend that your friend who already knows what to do sends you the sends you the play, but you don't take those steps because you, you know, life or you're too lazy or whatever comes into play but i think that uh, a problem that um pittsburgh has in terms of its art community mm-hmm. is that sometimes and a lot of the time i think we're too nice to each other mm. if you think about like one of the like stereotypes of like a new york or uh la mm-hmm. is it's like choose you up spit you out type of thing right yeah and here, it's like no matter what you do, regardless of how lazy or mediocre it is, mm-hmm. there is a place for you to feel accepted, mm. which seems like a good idea, mm-hmm. but it creates a lot of this these attitudes, right? Yeah. Where it's like you have people that are just kind of like somewhat trying and there's no like ability or willingness to just kind of be more real with mm-hmm. each other. And I think that we need that. I mean, I don't know about the art scene as much because I'm connecting more with music. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's a lot of like, okay, why do a lot of people look at the Pittsburgh music scene like it's not that great? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, because when a touring band comes through, these promoters will let any fucking idiot that says they could sell tickets play the show. The band sucks. Right. <laughs> Stop letting bad bands play shows for out-of-town artists. Right. Because a lot of people go to those shows that don't go to local shows and mm-hmm. that opening band is now the representation of a all local. local music. Right. You know, and like, oh, well, you know, we were playing these shows with these people. It's like these, like a lot of these bands just aren't good. They're not ready to play shows yet. Right. And that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be ready. Yeah. But there's like a lack of willingness to be able to like have real conversations with people like, yo, do you really want to do this? Or like, hey, like, I want to play with you guys, but like, I just don't think you're ready yet. Right. But like, I want you to be. Like, I want all, I, again, going back to that point, like, I want everybody to be able to do what they want to do and to share their story with the world mm. and to be able to, because, like, a lot of the times, those stories that those people have in them are bigger than they realize. Right. But they start sharing things too early and nobody tells them. This shit is trash. This shit's trash. Right. <laughs> like, they might in another city where it's, like, harder to kind of get in. Right. And then... What are we left with as a city? Uh, Why do people look at a city like Pittsburgh sometimes as being a place of eh, yeah. because there's a there is a lot of that because there's no real again, like I don't back like gatekeeping or saying that like but no. listen, how do you balance that though? That's the thing. Is yeah. like I, I, is, is is my empathy 
a, a good or a bad thing in this situation. It's a little bit of both, maybe. It's yeah. strange. And and like and, I, and, I, and you're yeah from the, and from the music space, I, I can I can definitely I can from a from a fan perspective and being that some shows it's like you know how did this how does this person open up for you know whoever? It's like how did they even get? But like. Uh, I guess that's a, I mean, so many layers. I guess yeah. like, the, like the promoter being like too nice or maybe even no one, you know, a person in the band. It's just like, they're not ready to do this. Like, any, but. Um, and also like, it also, it, it also goes back to like uh, self-accountability. Who am I to say that somebody is good or bad? Or right. who am I to say something's not ready? Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I I think I have a pretty fucking good idea if something's ready or not. But also, who am I to say that? But, okay, I, I I guess I guess that this. But here's the thing: we have insights that where you can say that now. So like, whether you whether we like it or not, Instagram does play a part. Uh, you know, your the 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 last amount of people at your show, your your independent show, maybe does play a part. And then you can track these things now. So it's like, if if you have. Uh, I don't know. If you have a Dr. Dre, I don't know, that's a very big artist. And then, like, granted, he would probably, he would have his own opener. <laughs> but, like, for for example, if he didn't, and we had our, a Pittsburgh artist, rapper, producer, everyone in Pittsburgh would have to know who this motherfucker is to open up for Dr. Dre outside the city. And, and even on a smaller scale. So, you know... If you have a punk artist coming, everyone in the punk scene knows this this national artist coming in the scene, obviously. So the person opening up for the person, in, that punk band in Pittsburgh opening up, everyone on the punk scene has to know this Pittsburgh punk band. No question. Am I wrong? Or like the social media has to show That's a little bit? That's not always the case. Not like, no. It's not always the case. You know, or, or should it be or no? I think it should be. Okay, because like... Social number, social media numbers, all always a telling truth, and like no. I, I, I feel like, but I feel like it has to have that backing to justify why this person is going on before this worldwide known band or whatever. Yeah, like, no, I think that there is. I just think that in a lot of aspects, we're. It's funny because like it sounds counterproductive because I was talking about how like well. The city doesn't want to fucking help us, so we're going to have to fucking help ourselves, right? Right. So it's really douchey of me to be like, well, I don't think that band's good enough to be playing shows yet. But also, if a band sucks or if they're not ready, then I think that they shouldn't be playing shows until yeah. they're ready. Right. I mean, I, I mean and, yeah. And I... <laughs> No, I listen. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think you should, man. Like, I, like, I, uh, I feel like music is more. Sub I mean, music is subjective, but it's like in some realms, it's like especially if you're experienced. And I don't know, man. I, I get what you're saying. Like, it, you, 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 could, you could feel dude. Like, think, who am I to say? I think there's. But, I think. I think that I have a good point that is not being articulated as. Um. You have a right, though. My, my, my point is not being articulated as diplomatically as right. I would like for not it to for, be <laughs> yeah. because I don't want to be coming off like all oh, like fuck people. But nah. like there's just there's a lot of trash. But you're, but you're coming at it from you're not coming at it I'm from, coming a, at it from, from a, a point of the city. Like I'm not, not from you as individuals. It's like yeah, I want the city to look better. Exactly. When it's yeah. I want the city to look better. Right. I'm not saying that like I'm I should my, I should be playing instead of somebody else. Right. right. And I'm not saying that these people should never play. Exactly. I'm just saying that the local music scene as a whole, from an outsider perspective, would mm. probably get a lot more respect if the city had respect for itself. That's a great point. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, not to like be gross about it, but I'm going to. Nah, like, you it, know what it, I mean? It's like the like, what do we think about like people that just kind of sleep with anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. that sort of a mindset. Yeah. Like it's like, you know, I don't think that we should just be willing to take anything because it is live music. Right. I think that we should be a lot more picky as consumers and participants in this community yeah. about like who gets to be on certain stages. Yep. Granted, there are places for every band needs to start somewhere. Right. You got but it. bands should not be starting on bigger stages in front of a lot of people that don't understand that what they're seeing is like not a representation of yeah. 
the local music community. That's, no, that that is a great point, and like I think you articulated it very well just now. Okay. Yeah. No. One hundred. We'll keep that one. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I'm for real because it's like uh, it's 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 not about you're not it's not about you or you know your band or whatever you're. Tr- it's about no. <laughs> I want. I want. I want everyone. I want this city to rise up, and it only does that by when these when these bigger bands come in. Like we have our best of the best, or you know whoever is solidified going under them. For in in, in this example, going like you know you know opening up for them, and you know they gain new fans and they gain a new respect for Pittsburgh. And oh shit, let me check out other people on the Pittsburgh yeah. scene. You I know? mean, there's been a lot of times that. I've played shows opening up for out of town bands where people will come up to our merch table mm-hmm. and they're like, where are you guys from? I'm like, shit, I live 10 minutes up the street. Right. <laughs> like we're from here. And they're yeah. like, no shit. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm always like, if you like us, there's a lot of other bands like us in the city. Right. So if you're trying to go to some shows, follow us mm-hmm. and see when we're playing shows, because we're going to be playing with other bands that you're going to like, yes, like if man. you want to be involved. And, and, and that's how that happens. Like, that's how like, you know, you, you know, you gotta get to Pittsburgh, man. Like, like literally, other cities, other states, like yo, like the rumblings. It's like yo, like I saw them in Pittsburgh. I saw them in Pittsburgh, but I saw these other motherfuckers in Pittsburgh. That scene is, yeah. You know, it's, just that, the, it's just like the old school, like yo, like the the word of mouth. It, it really, it still happens, and like that's how you get people yeah. traveling from Ohio, West Virginia, like, you know, whatever. But just I, like I, I do think that there are some clicks little bubbles in the music scene that are very particular about who they let in. Yeah. But also it's a problem right. because every single event they do is exactly the same. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So now it's becoming like a, you know, is this for the community or right. are we just having like parties at a bar? Right. No. One, you know, one, like this isn't, it's not inviting it's not trying to it's not trying exactly right what are the artists no yeah i won one thousand yeah i've you know i've told the dudes in my band several times depending on the lineup it's like yo i would love to see and hang out with those guys but why do we got to drag our instruments across town why don't we just fucking go let me and have some beers like we don't need to play songs for each other let me let me ask you something yeah i was watching this um i was watching uh this like 30 minute Wiz khalifa documentary about um uh, his first album. It was like a yeah, it was, it, and it was it was one of the per, uh, I forget who said it, but it was just like he had to leave. Like he had to like Pitts. He was doing things in Pittsburgh, and like it wasn't like he literally he got more respect outside of the city. Sure, and then he had to come back, and then he had it because you know outside. And I feel like that's a I feel like it's a big thing with the music scene here in Pittsburgh. I feel like no, it's not respected. And I don't know if it's that like that way for every genre, but I feel like it's not respected until the world sees it first, and then you come back. And like I don't know, I'm looking at it from a different standpoint where I'm like, yeah, I want to take over this. I want everybody to know me here, and then well, let's see, because like, like for music, it's different. Pittsburgh is a city that, in terms of arts and entertainment, yeah. it'll easily overlook itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how like I can't tell you how many times I've drove past really good restaurants Mm -hmm. to drive another hour to go to to another, the exact same kind of a restaurant. Right. right? Yep. And it's very similar with the music. I think that, you know, the way that a lot of people get their information about arts and entertainment in Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. is from people talking about it online Mm -hmm. and like bloggers and things like that. And there are some people that do a good job at promoting local music Mm -hmm. through like Scott Mervis of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, who's been on the podcast. Shout outs to Scott. Good dude. Um, But he mostly focuses on like rock Mm. and rock adjacent things. And there's a lot of music outside of that. Right. And, um, but he's like the only person I could think of that's like locally really promoting stuff. You know, now there are some people with the Pittsburgh city paper. They kind of always have like a rotating cast of people that are, doing music writing in there. And that's right. always cool. But like none of those, I don't know how many people really read the city paper. Mm, okay, You know, like if we want to get into the whole conversation about like the best of mm-hmm. that they do every year, um, it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, people getting mad about like them not getting on in that. I'm like, do you know anybody that even reads the city paper? Why? It's like, uh, it's like there aren't, they don't write articles on 
heavy metal bands. Yeah. They don't write articles. They may have, they've done some, I think like, you know, they probably had, you know, Wiz Khalifa on it back in the day or something like that. But for sure. the most part, it's, the, they don't really do a whole lot of music or arts or I don't know what they do. Everything hey. is like, hey. I mean, I know people that work there and I understand it's probably not easy to do like a free publication with like getting sponsors and finding like what kind of material you got to put in there to get people to give a fuck about it. But like right. the whole best of thing, I have whole, I have conspiracy theories about it. It's very, very silly. Hey, listen to me. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say this here. I'm not a rapper, so I can't say anything in like my verses or bars. But like, I'm, I'm, uh, like let me say this first. I appreciate this. I appreciate every publication and like any any light they bring on to anybody doing anything here. Like, I I love it. But at the same time, I know what's going on. Like, I, I know like. You know, it's it's all for the city paper. It's not really about you no. know, you know what I'm saying? It's not really about, you know, the people that are supposedly winning these awards. And granted, I have and I've won I've won too. And it's just yeah. like but I but I made it a point. I made it a point not to publicize it until I won. I wanted to I be, did I did the same thing. I wanted it to be genuine. I yeah. wanted I wanted it to be, hey, but I didn't want it to be, hey, vote for me, go, vote for me, city paper link, city paper link, city paper link. I wanted or, it to be Yo, if you really if you really fuck with the city paper, you'll see it and vote for me. Like, or you know how like you could pay the city paper yeah. to get an ad that says like vote for them Come for on, the man. best. Come on. We what do we think this is about? Yeah, this is about revenue. This is about the city and paper or any publication. I get doing it. That. And I get, I get it. it too. But like people that like take it genuinely, I'm like and 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 I'm, you've never tried to operate a business in any aspect, have you? Right. And and don't get me wrong, like and and, and but the thing is, like yeah. the only time that you see these people's names in that paper yeah. is for this, and there's not even there's not even anything about them. Man, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> I am right along with you. and like and so it's like you know it's not a good way to like really tell people about like what's going on in the city yeah i mean they have fucking categories for everything you know and it's so fucking over the top you know what i mean like it's like okay like cool like best best you know best music performer best restaurant and then yeah. there's like you know like best seat in the bar oh yeah like, best seat in the bar best you know <laughs> best place to wear sandals in the winter you know yeah, yo, that's it, not a category but i guarantee you it will be now my man i swear it will be it, it, it's very broad and like i understand what they're doing and 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 that's why like the the, so time, the times i have one i took pride in it because it was like i didn't say i didn't say yo, shit about it and I, how and do I, they do the voting yeah. They do the voting on the website. Mm. The more categories, every category that you go to, you have to click through. Ads reload on the page. The more categories that they have, the more ads reload, the uh, more money they're making. It's a, it's yo, you you hit the nail on the head. And I and, that, hey, and, that's, and that's exactly what it is. I'm we, not I'm not gonna knock anyone's hustle, but no. I just need like I I definitely want people to, to be aware. to realize to know what it is. To be aware. Yeah, it's just like, hey. And like, and, and, my th uh, and they do it. Like, that's the thing is like, as soon as they fucking, uh, like announced it, right. I feel like it's a month later. They're like, put in the nominations, nominate who you want to be in these categories. So not only is it, they're not doing the legwork anymore, right? No, they're getting they're having people to nominate. And how and do you vote. nominate for each of those categories? You go on the website and you click through <laughs> every single link where all the ads load. So they're just making money all year. Yeah. Off of this best of Pittsburgh gimmick. Mm -hmm. Every and and I and I get it and like uh, and oh I, uh, and if you want to go to your award ceremony, yeah. you better buy a ticket. <laughs> ticket boy. <laughs> oh, you want to add up to the event? <laughs> oh, another grant or whatever. Like yo, it's it, it's a, it's a, it's this it's a whole business, baby. And like yeah. they, and, and 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 they can yo, and I'm sure it's like that in every city. Um, but it's like. Yeah, it's all about revenue, and um, it's if you recognize it, it, it is what it is. But um, you, you, I, I, I don't disagree with you on anything. That's exactly what's going on. Like they, it's it's all about revenue. They got to get these ads. They got to get us clicking. They got to, you know. And but and I mean, if they put but, out interesting content, yeah that really scratched beneath the surface that people wanted to read right. and see, people would be on their website 
people would be picking up the papers. Yeah, but well, but best believe if I ever get a city paper cover, I'm <laughs> I'm shouting from the rooftops. I'm like, yeah, your boy's on the cover. Like, oh, fuck that messed up. Like, you know. So, <laughs> but no, it it, it it and it still it still holds weight as far as like yo like getting that cover. I mean, just be. Just living off that legacy of the city. It's the city paper. Yeah, but like no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's shifted, of course, for sure. Yeah, I think that but, it's just it's just one of those things that, back to the main point why yeah. I think we even got into this, yeah. is just like there are avenues there for the city to support local entertainment. Yeah. And I think that maybe it isn't all nefarious. I think maybe they genuinely think that they're helping right. by doing some of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, sure, maybe, you know, an Indian restaurant on McKnight Road that has a wall full of best of old plaques that right. might be good for them. For sure. Yeah. But and I, uh, yeah. And I, and the biz- I, yeah, it, the businesses love that. Yeah, I see those plaques a lot. Yeah. That's cool. But right. I think that there's more that could be done. But again, accountability. What am I doing to be involved in that? No, I mean. Yo, hey, does the city paper want to have an official city paper podcast? Right. And have me host it? hmm Like, Probably oh, not, but they should because people like this kind of stuff. And, they, and, they probably have a podcast and nobody knows about it. Well, no. I wouldn't be surprised. And going back, and let me say that, and this is also, this, this, I'll say this last, like even that just idea, that was the one thing I learned. Like you said, like they might not even be thinking about that until you until you find out who you got to pitch that to. They'll be like, oh, oh shit, Brian, we wasn't even, yes. How, we let's work out a budget. Like, what do you like? It, it, it's mind blowing until you pitch it to them. It's like we they weren't even thinking about it. Then it's like, oh, all right. What other idea can I pitch to somebody else? It, it, it's literally that. I feel, I feel like once the like once the Pittsburgh creative community gets empowered, and granted, it's not like that every time. Like you, you definitely gonna get a lot of no's before yeses. But I feel like that is a no. That, that's a no brainer idea that you just set off the cuff. I'm sure you've been thinking about it, but I, you just set off the cuff at the tell of this podcast. Yo, why doesn't the city paper have a podcast with me hosting it as a as an already established podcaster yeah. in the city? Why not? This is a this because is because the it city makes pa- sense because I don't think they want to promote the kind of people that I want to talk to. One hundred percent of the time, I don't know. I mean, may, may, maybe maybe so, but I feel like that's a conversation you could bring to the table. Yeah, because like at the end of the day, it's still humans behind this, but like even that conversation can be brought up in that. In that meeting, potential meeting, it's just like, <laughs> hey, this is what I'm seeing with like, like, does the city paper want to feature these artists? I feel like I'm the catalyst to 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 make this community thrive and just even bring more awareness to the music scene overall or rock Maybe. Or whatever. Not but, even just the music scene, yeah. You know, just creatives, different artists in general. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you're very. I mean, you're not completely outside of the music scene, but you know. No. What you do is, you know. No, nah, but you're, but it, it it comes to a point where it's just it has to it has to matter too. Like you can't we can't just be throwing anything on. Yeah. The city paper cover or best. Oh of. yeah, totally, totally. It's, it has to have some integrity, or it's just not going to be taken seriously. And I kind of think we're at that point a little bit. And I, yeah, and I, hate I get to, it, I get it. And I yeah. think that you know, I mean, to be fair, I am not the the public figure that should be representing mean, anything mean, yeah. you know i you know fucking you know we're you know uh some some uh some marijuanas yeah. and some alcohols yeah. <laughs> and probably a few fucks and shits and yeah <laughs> you know no, it's, it's it's real though and i think these conversations have to be had on platforms that's just that's just I, like the other th- it's i i enjoy what I'm doing because I'm able to do like I've never fucking been nominated like the podcast has never been fucking nominated for anything or recognized in any way publicly publicly mm. as being like a Pittsburgh podcast like yeah. people know about it but nobody ever fucking says anything about it like the city paper or fucking the nobody right. ever and it's like well I don't know why they would but it's interesting because you do see people talking about other local podcasts yeah and, 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 you know, and I, it's like hey I don't know I, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm not doing, but whatever. It's it's one of those things. It's like you, yo, I, I'm right with you, but it's like you really. You, it's like we can we can talk about it to each other, and like, but it's like uh, it's nothing really. Nobody cares about unless you're in. Like you can't explain this grievance that you have internally. Yeah. Like, it's like yo, what the fuck? Like what? But it's like it's only something like you could talk to another creative about, or like your girlfriend who is just like, 
Yeah, 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 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I don't know. It just feels like you know, I'm I'm a spiritual person, but it's just like what's for me, what's for somebody else is for them. What's for me yeah. is for me, and it's just like once. It is what it is, you know. We're going to do something real quick. My uh, my yeah. next guest is outside. Oh, shit. Okay. I've never done this before, but I'm just going to let him in. All right. Fuck it. <laughs> Let's get it. Yeah. And I'm on my second round of bathroom soon, too. Hey. <laughs> this is live. This has never been done on the podcast. Chancellor, the Keep Pittsburgh Dope Instagram. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we've been we've been running long, so yeah. We we just uh, had a few beers and we're just complaining about local music. Yeah, which it sounds exactly like what we're probably gonna do. (laughs) It's gonna lead lead right into the next episode. (laughs) Well, uh, I guess uh, spoiler alert for next week's guest. But um, yo, I mean, anything yeah, that we want to drop before we before we pull the plug on this one? Um, no, uh, as always, thanks for having me. Um, just follow me on Instagram at Keep Pittsburgh Dope uh, on Facebook, and then of course uh, keeppittsburghdope dot com. And again, I I I I got some things on the way. Um, that you know, like I said, you definitely inspired. Like I've, I've like I said, my background's a radio. I've always wanted, to, but like seeing you and what you've done it let me know that like uh what i want to do is is right in line so like you the way you do your show and podcast is very inspiring it 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 it, it want to make it makes me take my things to the next level thank so you keep doing what you're doing man and keep taking your shit to the next level so um i appreciate yeah, it yeah i, really I will appreciate, do seriously i love we'll, you on your we'll, show we'll, we're gonna figure out the the whisper nest thing yo yeah and if, if i want make the, it that you need to, yeah, yes. It'll be me and you. You're my, you're the co-host. I'm with it. We're, we're flying the ship together. That would be epic. Yeah. So I think that's a that's a live show. Oh, yeah. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, Whisper Nest, we coming for you, yeah, baby. Yeah, it's going to happen. Not yeah. that I, I don't fucking know anybody there. I'll figure it me out. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know a soul. I'm going to fucking go down there after this. Be like, yo. But it's, I'm just going to show up with microphones. Be like, we're doing facts. this. Yo, you, I see that vibe, <laughs> that, that neon sign. You on the stage with a guest. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be dope. For sure. All right, cool. Well, that's about it. Until next week, uh, this has been a podcast that you have listened to. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be kind to strangers. Hold the door open for someone. Yes. Uh, use your turn signals. And I'm going to say you know this. this is my, I always say this uh, as an artist or in life. If it don't hit your spirit, don't get near it. <laughs> you know it. You, you, <laughs> That's it. Dope. That's it.